right, here we are back with another episode of On the Delo. This is episode 125. I am with, I don't know, fourth time guest, Mr. Jeremy Scott Fitness. Yeah, I've been here a couple times. Yeah, a yeah. few times. Um, I've been to your place a few times. So we're just going to do this again and have fun. And maybe, you know, there might just be a, come a time where we get so lazy to not want to book anybody. It's just the two of us forever. I feel like that's what a lot of people do. Yeah. Like, uh, especially if you do reoccurring stuff. Right. Like, if you take, like, um, what was Rogan done, like, thousands? Yeah. It's I've heard Dave Smith on there five times. Se- yeah, yeah. So I get it. Yeah, no, he has his boys and his things and, you know, just a smaller scale of that, right? Makes life easier. Yeah, yeah. So uh, your last podcast, I still have to listen to it, but I I, I love where you're going with it. I mean, at least the title is about the things that, you know, being in your 40s now. Uh, You're a little bit smarter, for sure. Especially when you're young, you're dumb. (laughs) <laughs> well, yeah, I'm dumb now, but I was re- I was re- really dumb younger, and just things of perspective, and uh, like you you do make a lot of mistakes, you fail a lot of things, and you're like, okay, I don't need to repeat the same stuff, and just like what we do for a living, like you, like me, we get to meet all these people and all these different industries and all these different things of life, and it's like, okay, you can have a conversation for some guy who's 54 and some guy who's 37, and different, you know, hey, he's divorced, we call it on their second life, like these different things, you're like. Okay, these are things that at 22 I had no idea. And at, you know, in my 40s, I'm like, you have a, even with training, like what I do for work, you see someone like I had no empathy for people typically when I was younger. I'm like, I don't get why you can't eat right, how you can't train this way, how you can't. And then you become older and you're like, oh, okay, I get it. You are divorced, you have three kids, you (laughs) travel for work, you know, 14 weeks a year. It is way tougher than if you were. 21 and you're bulletproof and everything goes your way so the, the episodes things like that yeah yeah well <clears throat> definitely we always love promoting your stuff and and i think people should certainly listen to that because it's at the end of the day like seasons of life and and the things that just go on and i have nine years on you you're gonna be 41 soon right Is, yeah when, when's your birthday july august oh, it's august yeah so um it's like even from 40 to 50, like the things that I've even learned in the past 10 years. But here's what's really good news, I believe, for you and for people that are in their 40s abro- uh, approaching their 50s. You hit 50 and it's amazing. It, it's literally like the best year of my life. And I feel it only getting better as I get older. Now, granted, you can't go do the physicality things that you used to do, albeit I do a lot of those certain things. But for most people, like you're not doing the 20 year old workout, you're not staying up late, you're not doing all that shit. So there are sacrifices you make when you're, you know, this age and probably even your age at this point because you're, you know, mod- modifying a lot of the stuff that you used to do, but you're okay with it. I think if you grasp the okayness with where you're at in life and you enjoy it for what it is, you've got more time on earth, you've got more knowledge, hopefully you got more fucking money, right? You got all these things and you're 50 and you're like, your, your patience level may be a little bit smaller, but also your, your level of having to do things that, um, cause you to have patience, you don't have to do them. Well, yeah, I mean, if you do it the right way, you typically can weed those things out, hopefully. Could I, and I would tell it to anybody, if just imagine how you are today, if you're 25 and things annoy you. (laughs) <laughs> to think that they're magically going to not annoy you when you're 45, right. I, I, unless you're like the Dalai Lama, it's probably not going to happen. So if you set up the right way, you don't have to put up with as much bullshit. And when you talk about the physical standpoint, just from people in aging in general, 40 is not old, but there's like nobody in the NBA who's 40. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. like for normal people, right. we talk about it, and then, like, you'll watch a, a sports game, and they're like, this guy, it's a miracle what he's doing. He's 36 years old, and he's still playing. And you're like, oh, shit. Like, for in terms of, like, at the higher levels. Yeah. And so there's there are definitely seasons of life where you can ebb and flow and change. But if you do it the right way and you build a base financially and physically and all these things, as you get older, when you do have diminishing skills, hopefully you don't have to do the same things at the same scale because you've already – the compound interest is real in your physical body and your money and everything else. So if you do it right, the back end hopefully becomes easier, not harder. Well, hopefully. But let's talk about compound interest and compound interest in life. So you take somebody at, when they're 20 and you get them to 25 and then 30, 35, 40. Think about all those those spans of those, <clears throat> you know, those dime years that are all compounding. And what is really interesting is that when you hit 50, 
the compound effect of what I'm doing from when I'm 50 till I'm 51 to 52, like all that stuff is catching up. Because when I started insurance when I was 20, I was starting insurance. And then now I'm 30. I'm 10 years into it, right? And now I'm 40. I'm 20 years into it. So think about all the things, all the knowledge, all the stuff that I added up. Now, at 40, I may not be like retired and, you know, filthy rich or whatever. But I think a lot of times people in their 20s and 30s, they may lose perspective because they may not have reach the the pillar of what they think is ultimate success they lose that perspective because they're kind of like oh god i feel like i just keep doing the same thing and then all of a sudden one day it just like clicks like connections people that see what you're doing for a long time um all all sorts of different like energies just come into play with all that and now you're like Speaking for myself, now you're 50 and you're like, holy crap, I've, I just got off the phone with the owner of YouTube. He's interested in investing in a company we just started a year ago. But it wasn't a company I started a year ago. It was a company I started 20-something years ago. Well, that's, that's for most people. It's hard to see five years, 10 years down the line. And again, you, you should live your life day to day. You have to. You can't do everything predicated on this future that may never come to fruition. But for most people, especially career-wise, there's shit that is happening now from stuff that I probably started doing 14, 15 years ago. Because it's all a, a, a culmination of what you've done. Yeah. It's like people just look and say, like, well, you get this opportunity today. I'm like, well, I got that because we sent out, you know, 16,000 emails. Like, that's why that happened. And even, like, this last week, we had uh, three different uh, people come back to our facility, like our brick-and-mortar part of our business, who have been gone for, like, six years. And we just call it staying alive. Like, you're just around long enough. You're relevant long enough. When they did leave, we don't burn bridges. We're like, hey, good luck to you. Do what you guys need to do. I'll still be here if you ever want to come back. And, like, it's not like we sent out emails. We didn't do any promotion. It's just, like, out of the blue, they're like, hey, we need to come back and, you know, exercise, and we want to be part of your community. And I'm like, that's because you did something 15 years ago, but you kept doing it over and over and over again. And to have to start over, like, today would be... I think would suck for sure um, because now it's like I don't have to do the same grunt work I used to have to do because the foundation is already built and it's it is the saying like the, the fit get fitter the, the rich get richer it really the, the compound effect is real in everything you just have to get through that initial couple of years where your money's not growing and you're not really changing and you're not making as much quote-unquote progress as you want but if you can get through that bullshit phase like things can get real good yeah, you have to believe that it's working. You brought up two really good points. One is relevance. And I always say this, if you're not <clears throat> relevant, you're irrelevant. And the thing is, is like, I mean, you're great at it. I've learned a lot from you just from social media posting. And I know we've talked about it before, but I think it's relevant to talk about it again. Like when you look at your Instagram, you're what, a half a million or something like that, you know, follower, right? That's not something that happens anymore to people just all of a sudden. That was something that you had, you know, saw the opportunity and you just kept pounding away at it and grew it. And it's been, a, I, I would assume, like a very... Um, you know, successful brand for you in that essence. Yeah, I mean, those things, it, it's changed the scope of our business for sure. Um, and again, the timing of everything does matter. Uh, I always say, like, even with email marketing stuff, like, I was just a little bit too young to, like, really cash in on the stuff. And now we've built a great list, we've made a ton of money, it's awesome. But if I would have been a couple years before, I could have got those people on my list real cheap. Yeah. You know, but then maybe I'd be too old for the social stuff. And when you look at how much money we've made, like through social media, like it's changed the scope of my life. I go, but we've also posted on there like 5,700 times on like Instagram alone. Yeah. And Facebook is more than that. And then all the other stuff. So no, it, it's been amazing. I go, but you're doing it for a long time to just maybe your friends and maybe your family or into the ether and really just posting and nobody cares and nobody gives a shit and nobody sees it. But eventually, if you do it long enough, you build a community, you build a base, and then everything kind of grows around that. But you have to get through the initial, well, I'm doing this and nobody really cares. Well, at the end of the day, nobody cares about any of this shit. Right. It's just, you have to think, like, if you're helping someone, you're entertaining them, you're giving them value, like, they will reciprocate. It just isn't going to happen instantaneously. Yeah, you have to, I, in my opinion, you have to enjoy it. If you don't enjoy it, then what are you doing? And as I told you this morning before I came to work out, I was just like, I'm literally driving down the road going, God, a meeting or just come and just knock us all out of here and none of this really matters. Like, who cares, right? So I know that in the moment, I'm coming to see you to go work out. I enjoy that. I'm thinking of the rest of my day going, yeah, I'd, I'd be okay with today. You know, I mean, it is what it is. 
Yeah. Well, that's the tough part because it's like you get in this like esoteric view of like, well, d is anything I do relevant? And I, I use this example a lot. Like it is. It is to you. It is to your people. And you are helping others. I go. But then I listen to like, if you guys don't like follow basketball, Derek Rose was the MVP of the NBA one year. And I remember him saying, you know, 100 years from now, like no one will even give a shit that I was the MVP, yeah. and he goes, 200 years from now, no one will even know I existed. And that's somebody who is the best at what they did on the planet. And then you're sitting worried about, like, well, if I try this and fail, it'll be embarrassing. It's like nobody's noticing. Nobody cares. Like, you have to just go try shit and do shit. And there is people who do care. Like, I think that all the time of myself. Like, do I really need to share another video on how to do split squats? Like, the world needs that. Like, they need a hole in the head. But my people do want to see that. My yeah. community does want to see that. And if it helps seven people or 70,000 people, it works. And that was the point of it is just to try to help other people. So you can get in your own head a lot too. Well, and and to your point, what's the guy's name? Derek Rose? Yeah. Yeah. I, we walk in here right now, I'd be like... And that's what I mean. Yeah. Like you, the NBA Finals starts tonight when you guys ever listen to this. And I don't even know who's in it. Who's in it? <laughs> the Mavericks and the Boston Celtics. Not even a clue. And, th and that's the point is where people get so wrapped up in like, well, if I do this and fail, my friends will laugh at me or my coworkers will. They're, they don't notice. They don't give a fuck. And even if they do, they're not the people that you're going to attract anyway. Right. So if there's people who are in the NBA, and, and I'm just going to use this example quick. There's been 5,000 people who have ever played in the NBA. In the history of like life, just five thousand total. Oh my god! That's it. I didn't even know that. And so, and, and I couldn't name. And I've watched basketball religiously since I was five years old. Yeah. I couldn't name you probably half of them. I can name Jordan. You know what I'm saying? Right. Yeah. Like so, we get so worried about like, well, if we try and fail, I'm like, just try it, dude. Just put yourself out there, give it a chance, because. If not, you just live with the regret of like, well, I wish I would have or I could have or maybe this would have happened. Like, just do it and, and don't care about the embarrassment or the failure because at the end of the day, like, everybody's so busy with their stuff, like, they don't have time to sit and worry about you. That's a great, that is, that is great. That is, wow. I mean, yeah, we get so tied into our heads that we're such a big deal. Or, or not. What, what we do is a big deal. And it really isn't. No. You know? When you were a kid and you were 15, you got a zit on your face, and you're like, everyone at school is going to notice. It's the like, worst. Yeah. Three people talk shit, and everybody else didn't care. And yeah. a year later, it was irrelevant. And we do that every day. And I think it holds a lot of people back from starting in their own business or uh, changing careers or just in general, traveling, doing whatever, just trying to learn a new skill. Yeah. <clears throat> um, you brought up another point, too, and that was about burning bridges, and that's something I want to talk about. How has, you know, through your career been when somebody, say, um, I don't know, either didn't, I don't want to say, I don't want to say, not didn't pay you, but let's just say, like, um, Oh, we've had that. We've yeah. had, we've had uh, companies, I won't say the names on here, like, okay. fuck us on money, like substantial money. Wow. Um, I literally was having this conversation like an hour ago. Okay. Um, I always take the high road. You know, I'm older now, so it's different. And the the juice I have now versus when I was 20 is obviously different. So this happened, like, literally, like, this year. Uh, this company fucked us on a, on a bunch of money. And if it was 25-year-old me and I had all the same access to people and things now, like, I would have went scorched earth. I would have spent two hours by myself dropping shitty reviews on their stuff. I would have contacted every close friend I have, and by close, I mean, like, 100 people I trust to smoke this company out and just crush them on the Internet. But I'm older now. Like, they, I don't have time for that. There's nothing... Yeah. There's no good that's going to come from it for me. I know they suck. They know they suck, and I'm okay to live with that. And if someone asks me about them, I'll be very candid with that person about, like, the company. And we've had that with clients, too. But I always will take the high road. I'll always refund the money. Even if you buy something from us and you're like, I never opened it, we can tell you opened it. Like, or you, you know, you're saying, or like, <laughs> oh, here's my athletic green yeah, bag. <laughs> yeah, like, we can see everything you did. Um, or the people who just are like, even if they were at the gym, they're like, hey, man, and they make up some story why they can't come, even though they signed a contract. And I'll just be, I'll, hey, don't pay the termination fee. You can go to get your money back. You can rip me off. It's fine. I go, because to me, giving you back $500 or $1,000, whatever it may be, that's, better than you getting on the internet talking shit about me, telling a story that's not true, yeah. and then bad-mouthing to me to your friends, which is not true. I'd rather just be like, you know what, Jeremy was cool. 
it, w it wasn't for me. It didn't work out, whatever. But he didn't charge me any money. He let me go. He did all the things right. I go. So moving forward, you're always going to be more successful that way. Now, it hurts in the initial. Yeah. It sucks, dude, when someone stiffs you on 10, 20K. It's not fun. Like, I've been there. I what's, go, what's worse for you, the money or the ego? Um... I mean, at this point, the money, bro. Yeah. Like, just pay me what I'm, pay right. me what it is. But maybe when you're younger, the ego. Well, probably the money too. Probably both, right? Yeah. Well, when you, it's just, it's. I just do what you say. Like, yeah. mean what you say, do what you say. Just follow through. Like, we work hard to to deliver things to people, and then when these companies don't hold up their end, like, dude, your business and my business and Apple or they're all the same. Now ours are smaller. Theirs are bigger, but it's made up. Some guy made it up in his fucking garage one day or in his living room or whatever it may be. You guys have the ability to, like, make things right and do things right. They just don't sometimes. So at this point, it's just like if we sign a contract, just, like, pay me what you owe. It's, a, it's more a principle thing. Like, yeah. is 20 grand going to change my life? No, it's not. I go, but if I sign up and say I'm going to deliver, like, I would hope you would do the same. And even if people don't, we just – I tend to just let it – I, you can tell I get salty about it, obviously. Uh, but <laughs> we, I have to let it go because otherwise. But it's it also a formula, as you said, that people will, you know, sometimes they'll even they'll come back, and you can't get offended if somebody, like for me, if somebody were to leave me, I, and and this has happened, it still happens in my career, and and it is a little bit of an ego kick. We just have I had this one of my service reps just told me it happened just last week. A person's account that we've had 20 years, right? They've got five bars with us. The the son, for whatever reason pissed off at me because I have other friends in the industry. That's a whole nother thing without naming names, right? So anyways, he decides after 20 years, you know, I'm giving this bar to this guy that hangs out over here. He's a good Christian guy. Okay, cool, whatever. So after 20 years, he takes one of his risks. He gives it over to this other guy. My service rep, who's very tight with, you know, the controller of this organization, she's like, Hey, just so that you know, he took the, and I don't even know this because I've gotten out of, I've, I'm in the business, but out of the business, like that my, my reps don't, because they know they would piss me off and yeah, I would yeah. just like, they're like, it's just better we leave him out of this. Right. So this happened two months ago. So she gets a call from the controller just the other day and she's like, Lori, I should have, we're, we're moving this account back to you guys. We should have just never. And so, so my point being is that sometimes people just need to find out for themselves what it is that they're actually getting or what they're missing. That's again for us. If someone's like, "Hey, I, I don't want to come. We don't want to train with you. Where we want to go do yoga for whatever." I'm like, "That's cool, dude. Like, we'll still be here." And if you think something else is better for you, if you know yourself, maybe it is. And if it's not, like, I'm still gonna be here yeah. and deliver what we can. I don't take that. That should I never take personal anymore? Because I'm like, if you, as long as you're doing something, like if you just tell me you're gonna quit and just like sit on the couch, like I think that's a poor life choice for yeah. sure. <laughs> um, but if you if you don't like what I do, I'll refer you to somebody else. I have enough friends in the business where I'm like, this might be a better fit for you, for your goals, for your location, what it may be. If you don't like our stuff, our app, I'll, I have 20 friends who have apps and you can go on their stuff. Like, so to me, it's all. I'm, I'm happy to point you in the right direction, and if. I don't take it personal because yeah. it's not a personal thing. I'm like, it's a business, dude. There's no feelings. I, I think I, I joke about this. And, and there's a lot of people who, like, love us, who, who come to and train with us and work with us and people all over the world. We're very fortunate. But I'm under no, like, misguided delusion. Like, if I was to drop dead, they'd be like, well, who's going to? come to work Monday. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> totally. like who's going to, who's going to put out the, the, the programs now? Yeah. Like we provide a service for people as much as they love us and we love them. Like, and we try not to make it transactional. It is because there's an exchange of money and that's just kind of how business is. And they're still want to, they're still going to want to work out whether you're alive or not. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's got to go it. on. Everybody needs their policy regardless if I'm here or not. Exactly. You know, they got to get insurance. No, that makes sense. So, okay. Before I, I jump into kind of the, the mastermind stuff I want to talk about, I do want to talk about your app and you started your app how long ago? Would it be like year three, maybe? Is it year three? Something like that. I got to be. Sean, I had with Sean. Yeah, maybe year two or three. Two, yeah. Probably almost three. Okay. A little crazy um, to even think about. Did you, okay, first of all, did you ever think you'd have your own app? And number two, how has that process been? And, you know, from the initial, like, starting it, I'm, I'm sure it wasn't like a moneymaker right away. Like, what's that process been like? I mean, it's, you know, if people like, I don't, I'm not a, a video fitness person. Yeah. Um, not that I don't watch stuff and like take bits and pieces. Like I'll trade with friends of mine who put stuff on video and I learn from things visually, but I would never like sit in my garage and work out every day. It's just, I need a separation in this space. So for the people who like love it, 
it's been great for them. Um, it's easy for us to deliver. The technology um, obviously makes things super streamlined. I like the way we delivered stuff before, but the world is moving in a, in a way that it wants to move. And so my opinion about how fitness should be delivered is irrelevant. The market's yeah. going to decide what it is. Uh, in terms of money, the, the biggest lag is just how we would do the promos up front. So we would did, I think when we started, like a month for like a buck or something. So even if you got a couple thousand people paying a dollar, dude, you're not making any fucking money. Right. There's a huge lag there in, yeah. in, in payments. And so now that we've sped it up to like a free week, the turnaround is typically quicker. The churn rate is good. People tend to stay. They typically buy a year versus like a month. And that's how fitness should be. I'm not a huge fan of program jumping. Like if... Again, you have to let people decide what they want to do. Even in our facility, like people can buy a month if they want to. It's extremely expensive. It's cheaper if you stay longer, and I think it's more beneficial to you. Yeah. But no, it's it's been great. And again, we can work with people in, I don't know, it's like 90 different countries or something, and they can just hop on and do the stuff, and they communicate with us. And so it's the way the world moves, man. As weird as it is, it's been a blessing. Yeah, that's, uh, that's awesome. Um, I've been meaning to ask you about that, and I think it's important for people to kind of just hear the process that goes along with that. So, so that being said, you, you have you have a physical brick and mortar. You do one on ones. How many one on ones do you have left now? Um, it's just like just you guys. Um, yeah. I probably have what do I got? Like maybe six, seven people. Yeah. You do a podcast. Yeah. You have your programs that you do on a probably what quarterly basis. I mean, you launch a new program. Yeah, typically. And that's a lot of work. You have all your social media stuff. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, yeah, you, you do a lot of stuff. I know you, and, and so at the end of the day, you had came to me a little bit under a year ago, and you're like, hey, dude, you know, I'm thinking about doing this mastermind. Obviously, we'd been talking over the last eight years. So, you know, we had started this mastermind, and we didn't really kick it off until the beginning of this year. Um, and so what, did, what have been your thoughts so far about starting it, and, and what do you enjoy about it? I mean, it's just... To me, it's it's similar to fitness. There's really no difference. It's having a coach and accountability and a goal and just shortcutting uh, people's success. And not that you can't, like, again, I don't get people fit. You, I don't do the reps for you. I don't yeah. eat for you. I just can, I can give you access. I can be present. I can walk you through everything, and I can answer the questions that you're probably going to ask. And that's the same thing with these businesses. All these guys in our group, I've done your business. Uh, exact what you're exactly doing i have done it and so and i've made all of the fucking mistakes and i've wasted a lot of time and a lot of money and i've done a lot of things right and i've done a lot of things wrong and so i can just shortcut what you're going to do so when you want to run a promo when you want to get people in the facility when you want to close people i can walk you through how to do it because i've done it and even if i don't if you don't do it the same way i do it's fine i have 10 other friends that have ran your business and done this before so it's just sharing that Knowledge and giving it to somebody, and, and instead of having it take them three years to get a hundred members, it takes them a year. Yeah, and so it's just a faster route to do it, and it, it's a sounding board, I think, which is helpful because. If I didn't have that, if I didn't have you and the friends I have in the industry, it'd be harder because we're all just making this up as we go. Right. And to have somebody look over your sales copy or your website or your promos or connect you with somebody who's good with AI or SEO or geo fencing, like whatever it may be, yeah. like, I do... I do get something from that because I know if you guys just listen to what we're saying, you're going to have more fucking money and a better life overall. And, and you don't have to work 100 hours a week like I did for a decade to get there. Yeah, and, and a lot about what you and I have talked about in the last eight years is pretty much all business stuff. I mean, it's just kind of, you know, bro stuff here or there, but, like, we would like to talk business. And, and I think... What's well, your life? It's your life. Yeah, it's what you do, and it's and if you're passionate about it, you love it. You know, it's it's fun to talk about and share and learn from others. And I've learned a ton from you over the years. And and doing this mastermind is a blast for me because it gives me an opportunity to give perspectives to people that just would have never you know gotten it before. And and you look at the people in the group. We've got people, you know, California, in the Midwest, the Carolinas. I mean, just all over the United States, and they're very successful people already in their own right and it's funny because when you talk to them they're looking for those different perspectives they're looking for mutual support they're looking for you know all of these things that a mastermind is there to to offer and when i talk to these people one on one on these calls they already have the answer they're just looking for somebody to you know what i'm saying like say it's okay 
Well, yeah. I mean, there are already people who are in business who are making money. It's sometimes it's just little things of just changing the language that they use with yeah. certain things or how you promote it or the time frame that you do it or just different offerings you could do or different price points and really basic stuff that they might not be sure of that I I am sure of because we've seen it work and we've right. done it before. And it's just literally you're just sharing the best practices that you've seen to help them do the same thing. And again, like we take people who, if you're making 100 k a year, we can get you to 200 k a year. I've take, dude, I've had people, even in my facility, like come work with us who literally are making nothing in fitness and now you're making six figures. Just being in our space, like just taking bits and pieces of what we do. And that's really, again, it's, it's not just about money, but when you're, again, being a millionaire doesn't solve all your fucking life problems. I'm, I'm living proof of it. I go, <laughs> however, being broke really sucks, dude. That does kind of fuck your life up. So yeah. if we can get somebody to make a certain amount of money that they feel comfortable with in their life, which can create good work-life balance for them, which makes life easier, which makes life better. Like that's the biggest thing that really what we do. We don't just talk about, Hey, do this for maximum profit. Cause to do that, you're going to have to kind of have a, a shitty life. Right. If you really are. Yeah. I go, but how much do you need to make and how much is, you know, too much to where it takes away from your life and then you can find the sweet spot where it's like okay I get to play with my kids I can travel I can do this but I'm also making a shit ton of money as well I think that's something that you and I have both kind of done and put together that we can give to other people because we, we've both been victim of like we've worked too much we've, we've right. given up too many things yeah and we can echo that to others to not make the same mistake no I, I agree it's a pie for me it's a three-layer pie it's a financial piece it's a physical piece and it's a mental piece and that is a lot of what we want to offer to create you know some sort of of um, significance in their lives to understand that the, all three of these pieces are very important to, you know, get the wheel to turn. So, well, and just to get them to, to offload stuff. Yeah. Dude, if you hate doing some stuff. <clears throat> Don't do it. And if you can pay someone a couple dollars or just even like, like here, like Diddy's here filming, like we don't know what, how to do this as good as he does. No. We can try. Right. It'll be shitty videos. Right. It'll be, you know what I'm saying? Like these it clips. It be any words over these it. These clips will yeah. be bad. I go, yeah. but if we can pay someone their expertise to save us time, it's no different than like what we do in term, for these business owners. It's what our my pool guy does for me. Yeah. It's what my landscaper does for me. I can cut my own grass and I do. I can clean my pool out sometimes, and I do. They do it way better, yeah. way faster, way more efficient. And if I had to sit and spend my weekends doing all that bullshit, like, my life would suck. And so just it's presenting that to these guys, like, hey, if you can get someone to do some of this admin work, and if you can take it off your plate, it'll let you do the things that you're better at. It'll save you time, effort, energy. And I think that's a huge part of what we help people do. Yes. And also we open minds up to finding other layers within their business to create other residual income sources, you know? I mean, from different programs to different mediums to different effects. On top of that, it's the introductions. I mean, the guest speakers that we've had have been killer, and they've pretty much, you know— all been utilized in one way or another, you know, and, and been hired by these people, not because we're selling them anything, just because we're giving them something that they've never seen or heard of before. And they're like, oh, this is kind of cool. I'm going to contact someone. Is it cool? I mean, they ask us, is it cool that I contact so-and-so that was on the map? I'm like, yeah, dude, that's why we bring these people on. It's oh, a yeah. Resource. I, I do think if there's, if you, if you ask me like, what's the biggest benefit, it's not even talking to me, um, <laughs> but the people that like we know, and yeah. that we've worked with because we have friends who have worked for giant corporations who have built multi-million dollar businesses who work just from home who like to travel who don't like to travel and we can put you in that circle of people and now you're you know basically one phone call away from anybody you need to talk to for anything in your business which i do think is super valuable because a lot of times like we don't even know like we you don't know what you don't know no and so even just the other day we had a call with uh Dustin and them who do a lot of stuff with Google ads and, and tagging and pixeling and like I know that world but not like those guys do right and so even for me personally like being on the calls listening I'm like oh I learn stuff from what these guys are doing in their businesses and I learn stuff from our network of people which again if I can learn it at year you know 20 basically someone who's in year three of their business it's going to blow more yeah for sure for sure so <clears throat> to to kind of leave the mastermind portion you know because you know obviously 
we're we're very much into this. We love the people that come in. We'd love to get you know um, some more people in the in in here. It's a very exclusive group. It's it's just a lot of fun, and you know we have a lot of great resources and tools that we've been able to um, let's just say speak or implement or do. And whenever there's questions, you know we both you know get back to people right away. But I think for the most part, being at the ages that we're at now, um, for us it's self satisfying because it feels good to give back. It feels good to kind of share that knowledge and not just be all of a sudden, okay, I'm done working. And then we bury ourselves and nobody gets to have it. Well, yeah. I mean, like, and I know like what it's done for my life. Like, and I've been part of mastermind groups. I've had, I've been to every, you know, in our world, every networking event you can go to. And there's certain things I get stuff from and there's certain things I don't. But in this world of like entrepreneurship and being your own boss, I could not duplicate this in corporate America. Now, that's not my personality type. I'd rather work 100 hours for myself making, you know, 20 grand a year versus working in corporate America making 250K, but I got to travel and go be somebody's bitch. Now, there's no judgment there. <laughs> That's great for most people. That's just not who I am. And so if you are anything like me, I can walk you through what I did to yeah. create a lifestyle and a certain amount of money in a certain way that I can live my life. Now, it's whatever time it is today, like 140 on a Thursday. I'm done, dude. Yeah. Like, I'm trash. Yeah. I, I said that when I walked in here. Like, by noon most days, I'm garbage. Yeah. But I'm up at four. Yeah. So I do my work and I do it that way. I structure the days in a way that makes sense for me in my life. And as I get older, I'm getting better. We can give that to other people. Yeah. So if you don't want to travel for work and you don't want to deal with the boss and bullshit and you're willing to work your ass off, like, we can basically give you the blueprint of give how you the to roadmap. be successful. Yeah, for a, a minimal investment, really. I mean, at the end of the day, for, for really for what we're, yeah, I trust me, this is a, it's a good deal for people that can get in and it's limited. So we'll leave it at that. But I, I do, I don't want to leave this podcast with ha not having a little bit of fun with you. So um, if you had the time, what are like three hobbies that you would do in your free time that you haven't done yet? That I haven't done? Yeah, if you had the time. Or, or if you do have the time. Like, would you go play more basketball if you could? Or? Uh, yeah. Uh, if I just had, a, like, a sport court in my backyard, yeah. I probably would do more. If I if I move, I'd like to get a sport court in my backyard. Okay. Um, literally, it's, like, the only thing I really give a shit about. <laughs> <laughs> when Heather sends me houses, I'm like, is there one there already? And can it fit? <laughs> Um, I do enjoy that. Uh, I do enjoy firearms. Um, so I do go to the range, um, which is fun for me. Um, I like bowling, too. Oh, cool. To be honest. Good I just, don't, I just I don't get to go enough. Wow. It's a, it just takes time. Yeah. Uh, and sometimes, like, that's the part, like, I need to be better at in my business. But I, we give so much, right? Like, yeah. So you give all this energy. And by the time it's, like, 2 o'clock, I'm like, well, I worked out. I did this. I'm sweaty. I'm gross. Like, do I have energy to go do three more physical things? And the answer is usually no, but those yeah. would be probably the big three. Dude, kick-ass bowling alley right across the street. Like, we should just go is there. Really? Yeah. Dude, right across the street here. It's I, fun. I go to, like, typically, like, the little ghetto ones. Like, nah, the real dude, ones. you got to go to this one over here. It's great. I'll check it out. Um... Okay, we, I think you already answered this. Like, you're pretty much, I mean, I, I'm the same as you, dude. About 1 2 o'clock, I'm trash. I'm just like, okay, cool. Like, after this, I'll do a little, I'll talk to Diddy for a little bit, and then I'll go do guitar lessons. Like, when I say that, I know people listen, like, oh, he doesn't work past no. noon. I'm like, right. it's not what I mean. I go, but in terms of, like, am I going to, like, again, I'm in my 40s, and what I do is physical. Like, we maybe would hire a camera guy to come in, like, at 2 o'clock and film 50 videos. That shit now has to be done, like, earlier in the day. Yeah, yeah, I don't have energy or patience to fuck around later. And I can do, like, emails and texts and things yeah. on my phone. But I'm just not super creative and amazing at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. And if you're listening to this and you're being honest at your corporate job, you're not fucking great at 2 o'clock. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, right, Diddy? Um, okay, uh, out to dinner or couch with the dogs? Uh, the couch, bro. The dogs. All yeah, day. I figured. Do you ever fall asleep without brushing your teeth? Uh, yeah. Like I, I can like on the couch or something. Yeah. But not like sleep, sleep. I have a whole like sleep routine. Okay. It's ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> if I'm like watching a game or something and I doze off, I guess that would count. But I'll get up. I wear a mouth guard. I do a whole. <laughs> I do a whole, I do a whole thing. I do a nasal strips. I do the whole shit, man. <laughs> we got to get a video over at his house. It's great. Um, an hour on the phone or in person? Oh, depends. Uh, <laughs> I'd rather. I mean, if I'm going to do something, I'd rather do it. I guess face to face. Yeah. I don't really care for the phone. Yeah. I don't. And a FaceTime, fuck no. Bro, I don't think in eight years. I I think I've talked to you on the phone maybe once. 
I hate it, dude. Yeah. Like when, so we're joking about our, like, and this is about business. Um, how do you want these, like your leads to come in? I'm like, you can send me the phone number and the email, but I don't want to call them if I don't have to, <laughs> you know, like if I'm not in the mood, I don't want to talk to you, man. I'm like, can't we just, why are we doing this? I, I guess the way I look at it with that is like, I don't want somebody to call me at a random time. Yeah. And so if you email me and text me, then it's on my time when I can reply. Right. I just think that's a, a more seamless approach for sure. But if I can talk to somebody in person, it's way better than on the phone or like the FaceTime stuff. I just think it's awkward because I just stare at myself versus. But isn't it the opposite of what the person wants? They want to get a hold of somebody right away. Yeah. Like my, for me, like, and again, I, I understand this is how business works. If people get me on the phone, sometimes it's just to get me on the phone. Yeah. And now as I'm sucked into a 16 minute phone call with a tire kicker who has no real, no real drive to like pay us money. Makes sense. And so if I do that seven times a week, it's like, fuck, I wasted three hours. Yeah. And so someone else has to make the initial call or you basically have to pay us first for me to get on the phone, which is is sad. But when you're like a. When people see you and they watch you enough, like, you know how it is. Yeah. Like, you get people who just want to just talk shit to talk yep. shit, yep. which is great. But I have a wife and a family and friends that are going to take up a lot of my social energy, and yeah. I can't give it out to everybody else. Well, it's the same thing here. People will call in for a quote, and I'll be like, yeah, I'm just going to have her call, you know. But we want to talk. No, just vet it, you know. You see can't what do it. Like, it'll, yeah. it'll, that's what, like, again, running a business, it'll drown you if you try to do everything. Yeah. Um, no, it's horrible. Have you ever counted your macros? Uh, yeah, like early, early on. Yeah. Like maybe 15 years ago. You still ago. eat once a day, right? You just eye everything? Yeah, yeah. If I, it, honestly, I eat like once a day. If I eat twice, my day is a little funky today. If I'm really hungry, like I'll buy food on the way home. Yeah. But I usually just, I'll go to natural grocers. It's literally, it's my routine. Um, and if I'm really starving, I'll do the Vital Farms does the hard boiled eggs oh, yeah. in a little container. They used to have a little salt and pepper packet with them, which is fucking money. But I'll do the two hard boiled eggs, a full pack of like the built long beef jerky, yeah. which that together is 50 grams of protein, and then like a pack of blueberries. Oh, yeah, blueberries. And then I'll go home, I'll do my shit, and then I can make dinner after that. That's typically be the only thing I eat just because again like I'm not judging anybody if you go like to a work lunch and you have this big ass work lunch and you have like a beer or something or maybe you just have a big ass work lunch and you go back to the office you're really productive no I mean seriously no like if I eat a big ass lunch dude I'm out like dead asleep yeah like and then if I wake up I'm again I'm worthless so uh, yeah I try to just push it off late yeah. in the day works for me no that's perfect um pizza or sticky buns I mean, I could eat pizza every day. I could eat both of those every day. Yeah. For sure. Um, the pizza, dude, it can be even be shitty pizza. Yeah. And I'll eat good, it for yeah. sure. Um, but those El Choro sticky buns are all time. Yeah. I, I had the shakes before dinner. They're the both sugar. sugar. Yeah, because yeah. I don't eat that much sugar. They're essentially, yeah. for people listening, like a super, like a fancy cinnamon <sighs> maple roll. If you're ever here in Scottsdale, <clears throat> go to El Choro. The food's always amazing. Get the sticky buns to go. And this is coming from a guy who looks like me. It's it's worth it. Yeah, and we're not, I'm not going to bore you with the story, but it's literally like they hand them, they put them on the table before you even eat dinner. And th that one time they were waiting to do it, and a lot of the older customers were like, where are my sticky buns? You know, they're all getting, because they've done it for like 100 years. The horses used to drink water down around there, and they'd oh, yeah. give it with coffee to the um It's a whole thing. Like, yeah. and, they used to, and they have a trail that's still behind there that goes from the JW um, to El Choro. They have the original bar there, because I think back in the day yep. they didn't serve drinks at the JW Hotel. Yeah. They just did it at El Choro. So it's a, it's a great... Dude, all the food there is good. It, yeah, it was like a um, boarding school, I think, for for kids or something like that. And now people get married there yeah. basically every Drink day. Drink and all that. Um, all right, last question. Heat or John Wick? Man, that's tough, dude. Um, heat's a better movie, obviously. Um, I've watched John Wick, like, more... I've watched John Wick... Oh, 150 times. Yeah. At least. I, there's probably, like, weeks where I just let it play, like, on repeat. But I'll get into a span where, like, I watch Heat a lot. Heat's a better movie for sure. But John Wick is amazing. I will say this. Every time, like, I work out to movies, basically. Uh, almost never music, so I just put movies on. And, like, my wife will sometimes come in. We own the facility, obviously, so nobody's there. So I can put on whatever I want. So Heat will be playing. And there's, like, so much gunfire. She gets so fucking annoyed because it's so, <laughs> when you put on the volume on, like, super loud, she gets so pissed. Like, what, is this relaxing to you? I'm like, dude, this is my 
This yeah. is my workout time. Like, yeah. <laughs> if you want to listen to Taylor Swift or whatever the fuck you're listening to, that's fine. I'm like, I'm going to put on Heat or John Wick, and yet we're going to kill about 300 people during this workout, and that's what we do. So uh, they're both great, for sure. Ah, that's awesome. Well, cool, man. Um, thanks for coming on. I'm sure this will be um, not the last time, but uh, what um, what uh, program are you promoting right now? Uh, what are we doing? We um, I have a lot of BG Gadur stuff, actually, on my app, and so we've been dropping a lot of his stuff. We made this program. It's a rebuilt program is what, what it's called. Um, I'm not trying to sell you guys on it. Buy it if you like. If you don't, buy it. Shit. Um, but if you're somebody who's a little bit older, um, meaning like you're over the age of 30, you have any aches and pains and kind of some in nagging injuries, it's the most, like, fun functional way to get you back in the best shape of your life because there's like these dedicated mobility flows we do a lot of tissue work it's just very smart training for people as you're older because again i'm in my 40s i still like to do dumb shit i go but i do it with the governor on it because again even though like i'm still relatively strong and fit and all these things it's not the same as when i was 22 and now it's like i'll get tennis elbow or i'll you know i'll get a sore hip or these little things and so we try to mitigate those now and that program is really kind of walk you through if something hurts don't just like let it fester and grow into something bigger like, let's take care of it let's work on it let's keep you mobile fit strong you know not just for this year but for the next 50 years and it's it's probably it's something that it took a lot of time to do um and i know it it matters and the more that we promote it the more i know people will will do it because eventually father time is undefeated yeah and if, you, if you're not sore or if something's bothering you today it will tomorrow or the next day and and we try to like mitigate that stuff as fast as we can yeah you did a great job at it so we'll put all that in show notes and links and follow him on instagram he's got his own podcast and then you know uh, if you want to check out the mastermind we'll have that in links as well and and there's going to be a lot of cool snippets from this to you know be able to introduce people to to what we're doing so uh thank you uh, i appreciate you on the dead of your day to come and, and do this i did I can always come bullshit through this for a little bit. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. Happy to. And again, I know it helps people for, for people who are running yeah. a business or even just people in their career or whatever point in life just to hear, like, you can make a change. You can shift stuff. You can do stuff differently. Um, whether you do it with us or by yourself, it's fine. I go, but it is always easier when you have the help of, of other people. And I know, like, just hearing from somebody who's done it. And again, we have both made a thousand mistakes in both of our businesses for a long, a long periods of time. Um, and so you're not alone. If you're out there struggling or things aren't going your way, you, you haven't found what you want to do yet, and you're 40 years old, dude, you got, you got plenty of time to change it for sure. Yeah, and we've got to combine 50 years in business, you know, so we're just two dudes in a coffee shop that just want to help others, and, you know, I, I just, I love it. I've loved it so far with everybody that we've worked with and what we've done, and to be able to open up the reins a little bit to, you know, bring more people in, that's exciting for me, and I know it is for you, and as we get older, that we want to be very selective on the type of business and the things that we do do. Like you said, you in-person train only a handful of people. I'm sure at one time that was like 50 people a week, you know, but to be able to you know kind of change the way that you do business and help people is different so. yeah and it's all coaching at the end of the day and if yeah you, you just you want to surround yourself with people who not i don't want to say are similar but you have like-minded interests and you're all just in the same boat of like we want everybody to crush yeah and you want everybody to do awesome around you and that's really what i surround myself with in my work life in my personal life it's just there's no room for a bullshit or negativity and, and it really that's what we try to do is connect you with ourselves our network and then obviously everybody else who's who has the same mission just to, to build the most kind of badass life you, you possibly can i love it yeah who's going to carry the boats and the logs and the logs Who's going to carry the boats? All right. All right, cool. We are out of here. Thank you for listening. Please, uh, five stars, subscribe, all that cool stuff. Um, follow Jeremy. If you do need a cool shirt like what I'm wearing right here, there. this is uh, from Apollo Creed. Um, everybody knows the Apollo Creed. Uh, you can buy it on Jeremy's website. We'll put that in the link as well. Um, and until next time, peace out.